There are these mysterious <laughs> piles of bread that appear everywhere in my life, and I just don't know why they're there. Hi, I'm Kenji Lopez Alt of Serious Eats. I'm here with Jim Leahy of Sullivan Street Bakery. Um, we're talking about his new book, My Pizza, and he's going to show us how to make some pizza yeah. in his home. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to eat some yummy pizza together. Awesome. And uh, I did not say that. So this is how to make noni dough. This is Leahy's famous noni well, dough. So the idea of like, oh, we're going to make a noni bread without using a recipe is as simple as having flour and water, a little bit of salt. Uh -huh. We have some yeast, right? Mr. Leahy always has some yeast on hand. Aha! Uh -huh. Yes! So I mix the ingredients together, right. just like this. And then I'm going to do this without having to um, really knead it. You can develop gluten the same way you can kneading it just oh, by... Uh, yeah, I think it's actually it. better because better. you don't oxidize the wheat. And at the end of the day, it's about viscosity. So maybe it's a little on the wet side, but this is good. I don't need to add any more than this. So that's it though, that's, yeah, that's done. I would let it ferment until it grows as tall as it possibly can. Okay. It will be popped. And then how long does that take? With the quantity of yeast, the temperature of the room, and perhaps even the temperature outside, maybe Nine hours, eight hours. Nine hours. Okay, yeah. so it'll just sit there. Yeah. Cover it up. Let it sit there. Yeah, and then hours. at like you know four in the morning, I'll wake up. Right. And make myself some pizza. <laughs> just kidding. You're gonna get the same elasticity out of this dough simply by handling it a couple of times. Right. Right. And that's so, all. It's all because of the long fermentation. The really long yeah. fermentation. So if you right. like knock it down and then make little balls. So what we want to do, Ken, is open up the dough and stretch out the edge, just the very edge. Look, really gentle, barely holding on to it. So that's kind of all the, all the same thickness. You have a disc that's a little wider, right? Mm -hmm. It hasn't that's deflated. Quite, quite as well, go toward the very outside, the very rim, and try to thin out the rim, okay? When you get the dough to a big enough size, then, then you can just knuckle it, you know? Mm -hmm. And you might feel, because this dough has a slight skin, that there's a little stickiness to it every so uh -huh. often, right? Don't worry yeah, about that. Don't worry anyway. about that now. If you want, I mean, if you really go look really close to the edge, see how my fingers? We're almost just like right, right at the very edge of the dough. You see what I'm saying? Right at the edge. Don't be afraid. Ah! Almost punctured it, almost lost it. And then, you know, if you, if you do this long enough, you'll get a disc that opens up. Uh -huh. And when it gets this big, you saw, you saw that I just dipped it in flour, right? Uh -huh. If you want to, you can continue. You always make it bigger than you actually want it to be. It's gonna pull back a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's gonna shrink, right? So, here we have a dough. It's beginning to shrink a little bit. How many people, when they cook from a cookbook, the recipe is a springboard mm -hmm. for something else? This is just sharp provolone, is that, is that what you're Yeah, saying? sharp provolone. Such a yummy cheese. A little bit of ginger, shredded, kind of coarse. I don't mind if I get a nice piece of ginger, garlic. And then typically what I do with moths, I just try to like crumble it and tear it. And then what else do you put? Oh, chili pepper, chili pepper, that's right. And chili pepper. You have to be careful with this stuff, right? Blanche broccoli, Rob? I like to have a little crunch, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And that's it, in a nutshell. Got a little bit of salt. I think it needs a little bit. I feel like, just for kicks, just feel this. Is this coriander? Yeah, I'm throwing a couple of coriander seeds on here. Hmm. I don't know why. But you see, that's the way I think. Every so often, just try something a little different. You know, I love toasted seeds. You just have the pizza stone. Preheated, 500 and degrees. It's, it's just and then when I get to 500 degrees, maintain the temperature and then you put the boiler on full God. blast. What are you aiming for? Two At least amount of time possible. <laughs> Always is the objective of right, it. Right, right. What is it the recipe side? Because maybe we're right on target, you know what I mean? So it's three and a half minutes. We're done. Uh, see how wet it is? Yeah. That's because of the way. The way. Uh -huh. The cheese is so fresh. But just like, I mean, the bubbles yeah. are amazing. Yeah. And the bottom, Probably is hammered or no, it's nice. Oh, we got a leak, man. Look at this. Whoa. Ooh. Ooh. That looks nice. That's pretty. I got, I got noise. I got noise. I got noise. Do that noise. Do that noise. Do that noise. Mm -hmm. Crunch. Let's do one there. I think it's pretty phenomenal. It does have a good texture, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, really good. Yeah. No, but it's amazing you get that super thin crust, but this very airy, slightly moist, chewy uh, mm -hmm. crumb from a home oven, most people don't get. Yeah, no, the recipe in the book is very, very, very simple. Uh, very easy to do. Ooh. What, hot? <laughs> Bring yourself? Chili? Chili. Nice, right? Yeah. Not too hot, right? I right. think I just got a big chunk, though. <laughs> You're lucky. I haven't hit one yet. <laughs>